The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to Jesus and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell Mary to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, welcome everyone to our celebration. I'll just briefly look at the readings. They're beautiful. The first reading is the last chapter in the book of Exodus. If you remember, Exodus is that journey of Israel out of captivity in Egypt. This was like 3,500 years ago or so. But this last chapter highlights the obedience of Moses who listened to God and obeyed every commandment. So it says, Moses did everything just as the Lord had commanded him. And that's repeated ten times in this final chapter. So Moses builds the tabernacle, which was like a portable tent, which housed the Ark of the Covenant, which itself had in it the two tablets of the Ten Commandments, the jar of manna, which is a foreshadowing of what we're doing here tonight, the Eucharist, and Aaron's staff. So great was this house of God that when it was built, according to the specific instructions of God, it says the glory cloud covered the tent of the meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. It says the cloud settled upon it. That word settled upon it is actually overshadowed the tabernacle. It's a very interesting word because it's repeated again in the New Testament. In the Gospel of Luke, when the Holy Spirit overshadows the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she conceives and gives birth to Jesus. The same Holy Spirit that overshadowed the original tabernacle now overshadows Mary, who is the true Ark of the Covenant, and is here present tonight because the Holy Spirit will overshadow the bread and the wine when the priest puts his hands over them and calls down the Holy Spirit, then a miracle happens. The bread and the wine are changed into Christ, Jesus. And that's a great miracle. That's why it's such a joy for us to be here tonight to witness this miracle and to have your children now partake of it in the very first time. Notice that the psalmist is so excited about the presence of God that he says, My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy. To the living God. Happy are those who live in your house. Happy are those whose strength is in you. They go from strength to strength. That's one of the consequences of receiving the Eucharist. When we receive Jesus in us, we're strengthened. We go from strength to strength to carry on in this life of struggle so that we can be true representatives of God, loving and kind and doing God's will like Moses did in obedience. We come to the gospel because today is the memorial of St. Martha. St. Martha is highlighted in the gospel because she and her sister, Mary, were welcoming Jesus into their home. And two of them acted a little differently. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and simply listened to Jesus. She was so captivated by his presence that she couldn't do anything else but sit and listen. In a sense, that's what we're doing here today. We come and we sit at the feet of Jesus, we listen to the word, and then we receive Jesus into our hearts through this beautiful sacrament of the Eucharist. And that's why God says to Mary that she has chosen the better part. But Martha is not to be dismissed because she also is present to God in her hospitality. She prepares a meal for him. Now she's distracted, she's a bit annoyed at her sister, and she's corrected by God, but she's not to be diminished because hospitality, serving others, is very important. As Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 25, to the extent that you've done it 
to the least of my brothers and sisters, you've done it to me. So when we serve the poor, the needy, when we're charitable and kind and forgiving, we actually do those things to Jesus. And that's why it's so important that we have both the contemplative, which is sitting at the feet of Jesus, and the active. We receive Jesus at this Mass, we sit at his feet, and then we go out into our community and we serve Jesus there by our kind deeds and our graciousness. So all of this is a, a wonderful celebration that God's presence is going to be here tonight. And now to your boys and girls who receive him for the very first time, let us thank God that we can do this every Sunday. What a privilege. And I welcome you back every Sunday so that we can gather again as a community and sit at the feet of Jesus and be strengthened, go from strength to strength, and then go out into the community and do God's will.